If you're interested in following me through the steps that I take to prepare this property ready to let, then you're in the right place. My name's Dan, welcome to another video. If it's your first time here and you're interested in hearing about all things UK buy to let property related, make sure you start now by subscribing and clicking the bell to ensure that you don't miss a thing. So in this video, I'll take you through the steps with me, preparing this property, turning it around and getting it ready for the first tenants to move in. First of all, let's take a bit of a tour around so you can see what we're dealing with. So as we come through the front door here, just here on the left hand side, first of all, we've got the kitchen. These units look pretty decent. It doesn't look a bad kitchen at all actually so with a bit of a clean up then it should be pretty good to go now there is some pretty quite a few rough edges around this property that are going to just need a bit of attention if we then come through we're into the lounge area so nice big window there so got a door out into the backyard here you can see that there's some shelving units there that i'll be taking off because the last thing i want is anything in this property that could go wrong fall down or break at all because then obviously it's my responsibility and coming up the stairs the walls look reasonably uh, clean and tidy a bit of a freshen up with a paint job should sort them out if we come over and into the bathroom you can see that it actually looks really decent in here actually relatively modern um, it looks pretty good i'll be taking that cabinet down actually i'd have to have a look to see what it looks like at the back in the tiles there uh, just to see if it'll leave a dirty mark um, but we'll have a look at that um, we have got an extractor fan in here um, it is one of the sort of old style Monroe's ones, so I will change that over. Um, and then, of course, we've got the mixer shower, which is great as well. So, yeah, bathroom's really good after a bit of a clean and a tidy up, just, you know, sort of around the edges, etc. Um, then it should be good to go. If we have a quick look in this boiler cupboard here, you can see that we've got um, an ideal Logic Combi boiler, which is relatively new, actually. So quite a decent modern boiler, which is all good and then just into the bedroom. So you can see here actually wallpaper's been stripped off already. So with these, these two bedrooms are the only rooms actually that have got wallpaper. A bit of the play, plaster has come off while the paper's been coming off um, and quite a few holes to fill. Well, not holes as such, but cracks to fill as well before I start painting in here. And then just over into the second bedroom, um, the smaller bedroom of the two, but still a double room. Again, paper's been taken off the walls um, already just to get prepared for us just to sort of start treating it, start painting it, getting it rubbed down, etc., um, and getting it prepared. So carpets are looking a bit shabby as well, if I'm honest. So I think they're going to have to come up. I'm not sure about this brown one. I might hoover it um, and see if I can actually save it. But obviously we've got this wooden floor in here, which is looking absolutely fantastic. One of the first jobs that I always do when I come into a new property to start turning it around is actually make a list in each of the rooms in priority order of what I need to do. I just find that it saves me so much time rather than wandering around thinking what am I going to do next I can just bounce from room to room in priority order getting the jobs ticked off. So I'm just about to start some work in this kitchen and what I'm going to be doing is actually putting an extractor fan um, a constant trickle extractor fan just up here. The reason why I would put a fan in here and a constant trickle one is because the kitchen is obviously one of the rooms that creates the most moisture in the air and you can see that there actually are a few vents around the place but what they're actually doing is just moving that moisture around the property rather than actually getting it outside so areas such as this which would be cold simply because of the door down there and also i dare say without having a look yes above the window just there so where these cold spots are the moisture is then going to stick to the wall and cause condensation um, and some internal damp issues so a remedy for that is for me to put a constant trickle fan now you don't have to worry about these trickle fans in the fact that you think that they're going to be expensive because they're constantly on they cost about one pound 12 a year to run and they're actually designed for the social housing sector and the what they the manufacturers have done is made it where you can't actually see the fan at all it's completely concealed and they're so quiet that you you don't actually know they're on either so they're a fantastic solution for actually moving and getting that moist air out of a room such as the kitchen and the bathroom actually going to core from the outside uh, just because this thing makes a bit of a mess actually believe this let me just show you this the hole the initial hole that i drilled has gone straight through the middle of these two pipes can you believe the look that i've just had rather than actually drilling through the middle of that soil pipe or that water pipe and having to fix it through this hole. The only option really I've got is to come across here and do another hole, um, getting quite close to the window there, but I also just need to check that there's going to be no other pipes behind this, although I'm going to end up with two holes that I can't use. So I've just been inching that through basically, 
just to make sure that I'm not going to hit anything, including, you know, the lintel that's above the window and also the window frame itself. And of course, I've had to be really careful that there's no pipes in there either, but I've got it through and there's just enough room on this side and then also on the outside as well um, to be able to get the cover over there. So now I've just got to put a couple of covers on. Uh, if you're just starting out investing in property, why not pick up a free copy of my book, How to Buy to Let, where I take you through each and every single step of purchasing a safe, solid, sound, secure and profitable buy to let investment property. This is the exact blueprint that I've used to purchase 16 buy to let properties and to build a portfolio that's now worth over £2 million. Simply go to the description below, Click on the link and I'll send you out a free copy. And back in my younger days when I wasn't quite as experienced, I really wouldn't have bothered creating all this mess when really actually I could just, you know, let this property with a bit of a paint job. However, I do know that actually by putting this fan in and going through the paint now, in the future, it's really going to pay its dues. Um, it will just mean that all of the moisture is sucked out of this, this kitchen um, and I don't get any mould, damp and condensation problems uh, throughout the bottom layer of the property. I'm also going to put one of these fans up in the bathroom as well. Just a quick hint for you, whenever I acquire any properties the first thing I do is get rid of all of the wallpaper and the ceiling paper and that is just because there's more of a chance of wallpaper actually getting damaged or torn or starting to strip off walls than there is if I've just got a normal standard painted wall. So this is where that gas pipe was actually sticking out of the lounge floor so I've just spent the last half an hour 45 minutes or so chipping it out with a chisel I was too scared actually to uh, put the hammer drill on it but digging it just enough into the ground around that gas pipe there that I'm going to get my um, plumber to actually cap it off under the ground and then I'll just pop a bit of cement over the top of it and then relay this carpet just to get rid of this knobbly bit sticking out the carpet which yeah I just can't deal with that. So this morning I've just spent some time getting a fillet advert ready to put on right move well to give to my agent to put on right move um, and I've put the property is going to be available in a month so I do like to get these properties listed and live as soon as I possibly can once I acquire them because then I can just get some potential tenants coming through the property and get somebody secured ready for when I finish renovating it the last thing I would want to do is actually wait until I finish renovating it till it's perfect get the photos done then create the advert and then have some well have a month's downtime because it typically takes tenants a month or so to be ready to move into a property just because they usually have to give notice on the current property that they're actually staying in. Now the reason why I would do this myself is just because I'm a very strong believer that the uh, the best the the better the advert is, then the more potential tenants you're going to get looking around your property. I think we all know the power of advertising, and I think we also know as well when we are looking on Rightmove, it's really easy just to flick pa past a property that has either got crap photos or a crap write-up, or it hasn't got some of the information that you actually want or you need to be able to see if you are interested. So I take all of the information that I can find from absolutely everywhere, so from Rightmove sold prices um, to the current for sale and um, advert etc I blend it all in I amalgamate it together um, and I write the perfect what I feel is the perfect most information filled advert possible I then grab some photos whatever I can find of the property and choose the best ones at the time I also take photos within the property before I've started sort of renovating it and making a bit of a mess and I just use the best photos that I can possibly find and get my hands on at the time now in the future I will obviously update those photos uh, because I always send in a professional photographer once I have renovated the property but for now if I can get a really good solid decent advert give it over to my letting agent they can then use that for the lifespan of this property so I only have to do it once this oven is really disgusting it's not been cleaned at all it's all greasy it's all you can see that the paint's <coughs> just coming off here um, I've actually look at that it's absolutely filthy disgusting I've actually just pulled it out from the wall here um, and you can obviously see the care and attention that's been taken behind it um, so I'm actually just going to replace it and get a new one because I think it's a lot better nicer and fairer for the tenants. The areas that I focus on first of all are the areas where it involves somebody else being involved such as my gas engineer my carpet fitter or my sparky for example so in this room here you can see that I've just whipped up the carpet I've taken up the grippers um, and also got rid of the crappy old uh, deteriorated underlay as well just so my carpet fitter can actually come in now I will start to gloss these skirting boards as well paint the door paint the architrave um, and get this room completely ready so then obviously it's ready for a carpet even though actually if you step outside there's still plenty to do but like I say you need to get prepared ready for these guys coming in because they're super super busy 
So if you can do the jobs and then order them and get you in their diaries, then the sooner they can get here and then it won't hopefully hold you up at the end of the project. So I've just spent some considerable time over the weekend cleaning both the bathroom and the kitchen and I will do the rest of the property as well before I actually give it to Len. Now the reason why I would put some real time and effort into making this place absolutely spotless is because then I can give the tenants a really, really clean and comfortable property to live in. Now one of the reasons I do it as well is because then when the tenants move out, we can actually say, my agent can say to them that actually it needs to be left in the condition that you actually received it in. Now what happens if you'd fail to actually give tenants over a clean property is that they'll leave it in the condition that they got it and what you get into this vicious cycle of basically dirty being left for dirty which then affects the rentability of your property the price that you can actually charge and also it deteriorates the property over time as well so let's say these tenants move in and it's absolutely spotless and when they move out it's not i can actually then send in a professional cleaner and get it to the standard that i gave it to the tenants in I've had a bit of a spanner thrown in the works today i've actually received a whatsapp message from my sparky just explaining that he's been into the property to start carrying out the eicr so the electrical in inspection report and to do those small little electrical jobs that I asked him to do. Um, he's come over to me and basically said that the light, uh, the wiring within the property um, was pretty much there since it's been built, um, well over 50 years old he says, and it's the old style of twist wiring with no earth. However he did ask me how long I was looking to hold this property for, um, and the reason why he would ask me that is because if he does issue an EICR on it and just puts down that you know there is a recommendation for the wiring to be updated in the future, um, then I could sell the property within five years and it'll be okay because these certificates last for five years. But I said to him, I'm looking to hold it for the long term. It's going to be a property that's going to sit in my portfolio um, for the next sort of 15, 20, 25 years or so. So if something needs doing, then I'd rather do it now. And certainly if I'm going to be putting tenants into the property, then I want it doing right. So my concerns now are that I've nearly got it ready to let. I've got viewings going in um, in two days. It went live on Rightmove today. Um, and now I've just asked him if, you know, how much work are we actually going to have to go and start chasing out these walls to get new cabling throughout the property, which is obviously going to cause quite a mess um, and take some considerable time to turn around. So I might have to just push that date out a little bit. And of course, obviously, it's going to come with an extra cost. So full rewiring a property, we're probably looking at about three and a half thousand pounds, which, you know, it's not a major issue in the grand scheme of things, but it's just a cost that I hadn't budgeted for. What seems to have sparked a lot of people's interest on my last YouTube video um, about property number 17 was when I actually got rid of the shed. Um, loads of comments about it saying, Dan, you should be keeping the sheds. Why do you hate sheds so much? Well, you can see the shed behind me here. I have sold it on Facebook Marketplace. This time I only got about 150 quid for it. I actually well, tried to pitch it up at about 250 quid because they were going like hotcakes. But this one's not quite as in good condition as the last one I actually sold. And what, makes, what it is that actually makes me, um, or helps me with the decision of whether I should get rid of a shed or anything else in the property or not, is just a few simple, unemotional questions. And those are, if I keep the shed, is it gonna add, add any value to the property at all? And the answer's no. Is it gonna increase my rent at all? Am I gonna get more rent from the tenants by having a shed in the garden? No. If I remove the shed, is it gonna stop somebody from actually wanting to move into this property? And is it gonna put tenants off? No. If I do keep the shed, is it gonna cost me time, effort, energy, and money coming back to actually maintain it in the future? And the answer is yes. So all of those facts right there just point towards me actually getting rid of the shed. Now, of course, I'm more than happy if a tenant wants to put a shed in the garden, somewhere to put their mower, to put their garden tools, etc. And actually, one comment on one of my previous three YouTube videos was, does it not bother me that somebody won't have a place or an area where they can actually put their mower? Because what it might mean is that they're going to ne neglect the garden. But the garden's actually the tenant's responsibility. So if they were to move out at the end of the tenancy without maintaining the garden, then that's something that they could be charged for. Whereas if I leave the shed and the shed roof breaks or if there's any rot or any, anything goes wrong with it at all, it's actually down to me to maintain. So I just leave a space where the tenants, if they want to put a shed, put um, something where they can store their mower and their outdoor equipment, etc., they're absolutely more than welcome, but I just don't want it to be my responsibility. So I was just sat here in the window actually, just minding my own business when a small face came to the window and we both got a bit of a shock. So I just opened the door and asked if the couple was all right who was outside and they said that they've just applied to do a viewing 
on this property so they thought they'd just come around and have a quick look through the window so I've just invited them in let them have a bit of a wander around and answer their questions for them seemed like a really lovely couple in their 50s and they've just been told this morning actually that their landlord is selling their property so they're looking for somewhere now to move to they've been in their property for 14 years they've both got local jobs they've got no pets they're looking for a long-term rental um, they're both local people seem really friendly really genuine um, and really nice so I'm just going to drop an email over to my agent and just ask if they've already got anybody or not I know that they were doing view viewings today uh, but just to put in a strong recommendation for this couple because I think I might be able to help them out as well because they did seem a little bit stressed obviously that they've got to move out of the home that they've been in for 14 years so here's a bit of a handy hint for you something that I do in all of my buy to let properties and it might also help you out as well I always use the same paint on both my walls and my ceilings throughout the entire property and throughout all of my properties the paint that I use is this Leyland stuff. It's from B&Q. It's 20 quid for two 10 litre tubs. So it's pretty cheap and cheerful stuff. It obviously isn't the best, but it does a good job. Now, the reason why I'm really keen on this stuff is because Leyland have been around for absolutely years. For, I think it was the 1960s or something. It says somewhere actually on here. But I use the matte white stuff and it just means that it's um, really readily available in B&Qs across the country. So when I come in in the future to freshen up one of these properties that I've decorated or renovated myself, I'll know that I can actually get my hands on the same type of paint. And if the walls and the ceiling are the same colour, and then I've got all of my woodwork, so my doors, my skirting board, my architrave, um, are white as well in gloss, then it's really quick, really easy just to be able to get around a room and giving it a bit of a, either a touch up or a freshen up. And the second reason that I would also do my properties in white as well is just because it looks so much more area, nicer, brighter and more modern for the tenants moving in. Those long standing tenants out there that have been renting for many years, they'll be sick of magnolia. So if you have just gone out and bought a load of magnolia to put on the walls because you've heard that's what the landlords do, we did many years ago. So go bright, go airy, make it look nice for the tenants and make your life a lot easier when you're coming in and freshening these places up in the future as well. I've just received the council tax bill for this property for £1,320.64. So what I do now is just email over to the local council. Firstly, I just double check the date that they've got me there as owning the property because sometimes tenants or whoever owns the property prior to you purchasing it actually moves out before the day that you own it. So the council will naturally put you on that time period. So I always just double check the date that they've got that I legally own the property to make sure it's correct. Correct. And then I just ask them um, for if they can apply an empty property discount. Now, depending on your council, where you're located, um, you could get a percentage off or they could be, give you so many months for free, etc. Depending on which area my property is in is depending on, dependent on how they do it. But the, the two councils that I work with actually do do it. I've also just told them that the property is uninhabitable at the moment due to the dodgy wiring um, and that I've got a tenant moving in on the 12th of September and just ask them if they can freeze that payment so I don't have to pay and then just bill me for the bit I owe when the tenants do actually. Actually move in. Just fitting this carbon monoxide um, alarm now next to the boiler, I'm actually putting it in this cupboard where the boiler is. It's important that you put these things really close to a boiler, so definitely in the same room if it's in a kitchen, a bedroom, or a cupboard like the one I've got behind me. Also a legal requirement for these buy to let properties is also smoke alarms on each floor of the property. So typically I would be putting one down in the entrance hall between the kitchen and the lounge downstairs, and then putting one here just in the hallway upstairs between the two bedrooms and the bathroom. But in this property, because I'm getting it rewired, I'm actually going to have hardwired smoke alarms put in just to future-proof myself. I have to say, I am super impressed. Look at this, how it's been left. So just a little bit of a rub down job on this and then a bit of a paint job. So you can see Chase up there. This is in the lounge and then there's one just there in that corner. But there's no dust um, anywhere. I actually thought I'd be coming back into a building site, but... Um, this is going to be really easy and quick for me to turn around. I just need to give them a little bit of a rub down and then I can just touch up the paintwork. So the Sparky has done an absolutely fantastic job. Um, and there's some real attention to detail as well. If I just take you into the cupboard here, you can see that there's a new consumer unit here. You can see this trunk in that is hiding the wires. Even up here, you can see that they've put cable ties um, around the cabling just to keep them all neat. He's even filled this bit for me here. There was definitely a hole there and I even noticed he's filled around the door. I was trying to sort the door out just before I left but he's filled around there as well. So 
I am super, super impressed. He's done a fantastic job. On the 25th of August, and I'm actually just putting curtains and lampshades up um, in all of the rooms. Some of these curtains actually were in the property when I purchased it, which is great. The ones that were missing, then I just get them from a local charity shop. So I get them nice and cheap, and I get good quality stuff as well. Flooring had to come up in here when the Sparky was doing the rewire, and you can actually see now as well um, that around these sockets, around the light switches, um, you really can't see the chasing. Tenants are due to move in in a couple of weeks' time, and what I'm actually going to do is as soon as those carpets go down, I have just given my carpet fitter the heads up that he can come in a little bit earlier than he was due in, and I'll see if I can move that photographer forward as well, just to see if there is an off chance that I can actually get the tenants in before the 12th of September. If not, then it's no biggie. It's only a couple of weeks before they move in. So we're on the 2nd of September today. My gas engineer has actually been in the property today, so now you can see that we've got our electric and gas um, new oven. What I also actually had my gas engineer Engineer do as well as the gas safety certificate is also remove this radiator that is here in the dining room so you can see behind me just in the lounge there's already a double panelled radiator so for me it was just a little bit of overkill and something that I just didn't need in the property now if this would have actually been a bit of hassle and taken him some work then I wouldn't have bothered but I don't know if you can just see behind me here it was actually plumbed um, it just came through a hole in the wall just here and all he's done is just capped it off at the top in the kitchen which then will be behind a unit. So it will be concealed, you won't be able to see it. It does just mean though, that I've now actually got to tackle this wall. Um, even though the property is pretty much finished, I need, now need to come in um, and actually get this all smoothed off, filled, um, and then painted as well. And then also my carpet fitter has been in today as well. Now, I always ask the carpet fitter if he has any leftover, which they typically do where they go around the doors, in the alcoves, etc. If he does have any leftover, just to put them into the cupboard. So I've had that carpet done there, and this is the cupboard just underneath the stairs, which makes it look a lot better. And we'll just go upstairs and have a look at these bedrooms. So you can take a first look with me, actually. Let's have a quick look what they look like. And yeah, that looks really good. It actually smells really nice as well. It smells really fresh, really clean. Looks really good. I'm sure the tenants are going to be super happy with this. Um, and then obviously I had to do this bedroom as well, just because we had to take up that flooring when we did the electrics. So I've actually just changed this door panel behind me just to get rid of this cat flap. It looks a hell of a lot better. It does take a little bit of doing, but I've actually created a video. Um, so if you did want to do it yourself in your buy to let properties, then you can watch it. I'll just pop it above now. Obviously I've got this radiator to get rid of now as well, so all I'm gonna do is just drop the local scrap guy a message on Facebook Tell him it's out the front, send him a quick photo and he'll come and pick it up for free. One thing that I do in all of my buy to let properties before the tenants move in is just pop um, a damp and condensation education sheet behind one of the kitchen doors here in the cupboard. So when they do move in, they will have a read if it is stuck on the doors before they then probably take it down and throw it away, which is absolutely fine. But the idea of this piece of paper is just to educate them on how to best manage the air circulation within a property and to prevent mold buildup um, and condensation indoors. It just says things like, you know, make sure you cook with pan lids on, don't dry your clothes inside, open the windows when you get up in the morning just to keep that air circulating. If you actually wanted to pick up a copy of this exact form, the one that I issue all of my tenants, make sure you go to the video description. Um, I'll pop a link where you can download a copy and, and you can use it yourself to issue your tenants. I also pop on here just a small sticker as well, just with the name, make and where to buy the paint, just in case the tenants did want to do any uh, touching up either before they left or whilst they're in the property as well. So that's me finished in this property now. The only thing that I need to do is have my photographer come in and take those professional photos and the reason why I would do that even though I've got tenants lined up is just so I've got some really good strong quality decent professional photos just for when the property turns over in the future I don't need to come in with a camera or send my agent in with a camera to take photos while the tenants belongings are in the property so it's just a great opportunity for me to get the best possible photos advertising photos of this property that I can then use years into the future. The next video in this series is going to be when I crunch the numbers, see exactly how much this property cost me to purchase in the first place, how much it cost me to renovate, and then of course, the golden question of how much it's actually going to make me. If you can't see the next video in the series, number three, at the end of this video, it just means that I'm still creating it, but look out for that one on the channel when it does go live. Thank you so much for following me through this video. Make sure you do give me a like if you've got any value from it at all. Hit the subscribe buttons for similar videos like this one around my own buy to let properties and anything to do with buy to let properties itself. If you did want to pick up a free copy of my book, make sure you go below to the description and click on the link. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.